Hello everyone, welcome to Art So Wonderful Show. I'm Bruce Wilson here with a guest, my good friend, business partner, and um, CEO of uh, Community Wealth, Daniel Parkins. So say something, say hello. Yeah, hi everyone. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show with you, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, it's Community Wealth Development. That's but, right. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, that's a big part of what I uh, uh, envision uh, as, as my work is, is developing spaces where communities can build wealth together. Um, and so yeah. it's, it's a pleasure yeah. to have met you and, yeah. to, and to be a part of this movement that we're working yeah, on right old, now. Same old, same old. So for right now, I'm going to talk a little bit about Art So Wonderful Gallery and Performing mm-hmm. Center. So we just opened it up uh, May 20th. And it was a good event uh, from four to um, six, I think, I don't know. What, I forget my um, social media director, Teddy, said, I think it was like 62 people or 52, something like that, showed up, which was awesome. We had a live performance with Jack Hansen Jazz and Sophie Gloria. You can, you can um, enjoy them on our uh, cable show, because our cable show, Art So Wonderful, was there filming on CCTV. It says coming up, so you was coming out, um, Probably tomorrow, Wednesday, May, what's today? 20 something, 23rd. Uh, yeah, something, I think it's the 23rd. <laughs> 23rd to 24th, to be out. But um, our so wonderful gallery and performing center is near uh, Target at the University Mall. It's around 8,000 square feet, mm-hmm. a stage built in there. Incredible art that's in there from artists that's from around. Yeah, it's so nice. I love it. When I walk in, I just walk and say, wow, so cool. It's from artists from around Vermont. Uh, I'm not an artist or a musician, but I love art and music. And so I'm inspired by all the artists and their minds, how they put this art, their media together. Mm. And uh, wow, it's incredible. And so you have to come in there. Some people have said that our space looked like an art museum. And I didn't think about that until this, somebody said that, more than like two people said it. And then I looked around the space, and I was like, dang, this does look like an art museum. Mm. You know, because it's, it's like uh, art all around the perimeter, and you know, they got that stage there. And, uh, Daniel said boot stage up, so we got a boot stage up. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think if the stage was in the middle and you had performing artists in the center there, you know, that might draw away from it being, feeling more like a museum, right? You can still have the art on the walls, but you can have things coming out that it's different kinds of art, let it kind of grow organically. Yeah, I talked to my team about moving stage up and they like, Okay, because it's not an easy move, but they're, yeah, they're not all those chairs and stuff. You know, but yeah. then I so like really excited about it. But we're gonna move it because I think you're right. You know, I yeah. right. And so, Daniel, let's talk about some of the projects that we're working on. Absolutely. Oh, wait a minute, before we get there, I'm sorry, excuse me, everybody. I have to say that we are looking for a muralist to help us um, redo some and uh, redesign some of our murals in the primarily in Chittenden County, but mostly in Burlington. In Burlington, Art So Wonderful have created and probably own over 60% of the murals mm. in Burlington. And we also created Art So Wonderful electric boxes. Mm-hmm. So you see all those cool electric boxes? Those are ours too. And um, mm. our, our partner artists have done a lot of them too, and primarily in South, South Burlington. But we need artists and muralists to help us recreate, redesign our um, murals in Burlington. It's gonna be an incredible, fun thing to do. Because what I like to do is give artists an opportunity to showcase their talents in um, places that probably they might think it's hard to do, get to do, but with us mm-hmm. it's, it's a easy, because we, we have, already have all these locations and we need to redo them because some, some of our murals are, are, are um, what has been bombed, we call it bomb the walls. Some, some yeah. graffiti vandals, uh, we call them vandals, bombed our wall. You know, the good thing about graffiti vandals, when you start working with us, you turn to a graffiti artist immediately. <laughs> the same art, <laughs> but just you have permission to put it on the wall, and and we supply you with the paint, and um, now you're a graffiti artist. So please. Um, look me up. Look up Art So Wonderful at gmail.com. Art So Wonderful at gmail.com. 
Mm. And uh, you just email me, Bruce Wilson, and you are in. I'll email you immediately as soon as I see you. And you are in. We want to see you work in our gallery. We want to see you work in our community. And so uh, thank you for um, not bombing our walls as much as some people's. <laughs> you see that cool logo, our so wonderful logo. Don't touch it. Just get in touch with me if you want to do something on that wall. Thank you. So Daniel. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we are. Ooh, Daniel, so we got some stuff to do, bro. You want to explain what we're working on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, there, there's really two projects. It's it's kind of a meeting of the minds, in my perspective. I, I really feel like uh, you know uh, Bruce has has created this really vibrant space for artists in Burlington, and uh, his his art gallery down in the University Mall. Uh, I, I've just been very impressed with how you brought that art into a space that's often just very commercialized, you know. And so it it's a uh, it's a new feeling, and it it it. Um, it feels really powerful in in how we can reclaim old spaces and and rebuild things and and that really is kind of what kicked off this whole project we're working to uh with the uh, friends of the frame so we're looking at the moran frame here from battery park we can see it from where we're sitting and uh, around the moran frame there's a chain link fence and it's connected to the burlington electric department's uh, electric building and the building doesn't look so great and there's barbed wire on the fence and we're trying to make that a community space and you know something about community being uh, inviting and welcoming and uh, you know what better way to do that than to uh, bring art to that space to bring street art to that space and to uh, really uh, help to uh, carry that conversation forward about what uh, the community of Burlington uh, represents and, and how the Moran frame fits into that space and so uh, with that as the premise Bruce and I got to work and Bruce has been championing uh, the uh, the art side of that project really trying to bring in artists as he said trying to bring in uh, opportunities for the community to participate in creating art for that fence we're gonna have a canvas that wraps around the whole fence and it's gonna uh, have uh, seven different panels uh, for murals to go on there and we're actually having that as a part of Juneteenth uh, we're gonna be having uh, the community participate in painting those murals and, and be involved in, in creating those those uh, art pieces that will be at the Moran frame and I think it's just a uh, a really beautiful project yeah. and so connected yeah. to that though on the other side is is uh, what what uh, we are calling a dialogue on community you know and we're what a dialogue is this is something that I think is significant to really parse out um, most people hear the word dialogue and I, I think there's some confusion around what that means and so you know a, a dialogue is not a debate you know, a debate is, is structured in such a way where you're just listening enough to figure out how you can shut your opponent down and it's a zero-sum game, right? Uh, a dialogue is not a discussion. A discussion is often where you're kind of using information and evidence and theories and ideas and you're lobbying them back and forth, but there's still an element of persuasion involved with the discussion. You're trying to convince the person you're speaking with uh, about your ideas. Um, and dialogue is not a conversation either, right? Conversation is whimsical, it kind of goes all over the place, doesn't really have direction, even though there's not, uh, there's there's often not a uh, an intention behind, you know, persuading people one way or another. What a dialogue is, is a process to seek understanding. And that's all it is. There's, there's no plans for what's coming next. There's no, there's no uh, intention to persuade or change people's minds. The whole objective of a dialogue is to create a safe space where people can share their perspectives. And by filling that space with everyone's shared perspective, we can all gain new understanding and reflect on our own understandings at the same time. And so I, I took a little time to explain that because I, I really think that that's important to understand the principles there. And to have this dialogue centered on what is community, you know, what is our experience in community, connected to these art projects that we're doing with the Moran Frame, uh, 
I think there's a lot of there's a strong symbiotic relationship there that that creates what I would call a positive sum game. It's a it's a way of generating wealth in the community that goes beyond just money. You know, there's there's value in creating that collective understanding. There's benefit in us being able to share a common space and build understanding together. Uh, that transcends, you know, a financial realm in itself, and, and art is a great way of expressing that. And so I, I, I think I've kind of really laid it out in, in detail here. I like to talk a lot, yeah. but if there's anything no. you want to wow, add to that, wow. Bruce, I'm just saying that you know, you said it in so elo eloquently and wonderful. Yeah. Um, and like you, one of the things that you, as you know, as we both know, is that we are um, <clears throat> learning from the community. You know, is community wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, learning from people uh, about Absolutely. their ideas and suggestions on how they see the world, yeah. how they see ways to make it better, yeah. how we can um, use their ideas and suggestions to share with others, and and uh, hopefully that. Um, um, can, others can also amend to the following for what these ideas are from others, and that we can use them in, um, continuously in our dialogues that we're going to have in our yeah. our so wonderful gallery performance. And, and mm -hmm. I, I can't wait because I'm all. I'm, anybody who knows me will say that I, they know that I'm all number community type of guy. Yeah. You know, I always laugh that I'm boots on the ground. And you, <laughs> you, 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 you the guy with the, yeah. you the brains of this outfit. I'm mm -hmm. the boots on the ground. You know, I'm, I'm the guy who just, just goes here but try to make it work. It's a very you know, complimentary yeah. relationship. Oh, no we we no. complement each other's skill sets a lot, I think. No doubt about it. Nobody's yeah. better than nobody, but we just do what we have to do to make it work, you know. And uh, so I'm excited to um, get started to take our first um, dialogue for the 25th of June, right? Yeah, so the dialogue will be on the 25th of June. It's from 10 to 4. Uh, maybe uh, actually 10 to 3, I think, is it's a five hour event. Uh, we're going to have about two hours of discussion right up front, then we're going to do two hours where we actually install the painted murals on the canvas that we did on Juneteenth uh, at the Moran frame. You know, so th once we've installed all the canvases on the fence, there's going to be some food and a little bit of time for us to just kind of socialize casually, have some conversation, and then we'll go back. And, uh, and process that event and have one more session of dialogue before we round off the day. And uh, that will really give us some time to reflect and understand and, and, uh, and uh, get to know each other and build the rapport necessary to to really dig into all those different perspectives. Yeah, that's, how, how yeah. wonderful that's going to be to get um, uh, individuals who are, who, um, are uh, going to be a part of or just come visiting a uh, Juneteenth event that's going to be downtown Burlington. Yeah. It, this is Chris. Now, come in Roosevelt Park this year. It's going to be in downtown Burlington, all throughout downtown. That's right. And uh, our space is going to be uh, between uh, Burlington City House Building and, City, and City Hall. Hall yeah. Where we're going to do this uh, mural. And uh, people from around probably around Chittenden County, not just Burlington, because they come to Burlington. Yeah, lots of folks to are enjoy, coming in that. Yes, to yeah. enjoy this wonderful Juneteenth event. And um, we'll be able to get an opportunity, hopefully, to be able to put something on our panels mm -hmm. that um, our artists have will design. And it's like kind of like a paint by number thing. But, uh, but how wonderful is that? And, um, and then for, for up to one year, once we install it down here on the waterfront, yeah. uh, by the Moran frame, people can enjoy it by just uh, absolutely come by and look at look at I put this person, I put this person up, I put this peace sign, I put you know, I mean, all these wonderful things that they whatever they whatever it is on this um, canvas that they can share with people anywhere in the world because we'll have our um, we we'll have our CCTV um, Art So Wonderful show down there mm. and um, they'll film everything for us in, in the excellent Juneteenth event too. We'll have somebody there as well. Yeah. And, um, and I'm so excited just because I love people mm. and I just love to see what people's ideas are. Yeah. Give me an opportunity to showcase their what their, their ideas and their, their talents on something. Absolutely. You know I mean? like, like these um, these um, tops that we're going to use, we're probably going to be there for a year and then uh, Next year, we're going to do it again. Do it again. We're going to do it again. Yeah. Um, so, with that, I'd like to thank um, um, CEDO, uh, Community Economic Development Office, for giving an art so wonderful an opportunity to be able to do this art down there. And I also would like to thank OKOK. OK, OK.
paid marketing, my friend Lewis Cauldron, who um, who's given us an opportunity to be able to showcase to do this um, at Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Yeah. So yeah, so, Lewis has really yeah. opened the door for us to yeah. participate in that space, and I think it's really allowed these art projects to be a type of dialogue in itself, like a living dialogue. Yeah, it's, you know, right. it's it's community participation. It's it's. Uh, we're hoping to have these. Each of these murals have uh, different visions or depictions of, of community. Uh, you know, in general, you know, maybe the center center mural we're thinking is like, what is the community in the present? And the murals on the side might be different interpretations of past experiences with community. You know, I mean, there. That's one. That's one way that we're thinking about working with artists to do that. But it really is a conversation between the the artists uh, and the community and the city as well uh, about how those how those murals get put together i think it's a really incredible yeah. project to see that those those uh, different perspectives all coming together into one artistic creation Sorry for jumping in there. I just yeah. thought I'm no. just very excited no, no, about I that. I am too. That I am idea. too. I'm just wondering if that sound is gonna mess up our show. Yeah, we should pause for a second. Pause for a minute. Yeah, you're on the right track. You, you just just uh, admit, keep going with what you were saying. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're good to go again. We're good to go? Okay, yeah, no. Um, so as I was saying, uh, just the, the idea that this art project is uh, is a community project itself, a community dialogue that lives in the memory of the art piece and that can stay right there next to the Moran frame. Anyone that paints on it can come and check it out throughout the year, and everyone that couldn't participate could still see what happened, you know? And uh, I find that to be really... Uh, special, especially with it being connected to this dialogue that we're having after. So look, how wonderful is it to have to have our art down on a waterfront, right there on the lake, the beautiful Lake Champlain. Uh huh. Wow. You know, you go out to the fishing pier. Yeah. You can go to the sailing center. You can go to um, come, you know, to um, skate park, skate uh, uh, Andy Williams skate park, Adolph Park, and and really enjoy some of the things Bronson have to offer to uh, the world. Yeah. You know, this is one of the highlights. If you look at, at if you in anywhere in the world, and you're looking at Bronson, Vermont, the highlights is you're going to see is the, the lakefront, the skate park, Parks and Recs, Battery Park, we're in beautiful Battery Park where we are today. Yeah. And, um, you know, the Waterfront Park. There's going to be the highlights of reasons for you to come to Bronson. Yeah. And guess what? Our, our, our art piece is going to be right there by the Moran frame. And, and, and Moran frame is already a highlight that they showcase through their um, social media yeah. about Burlington. Absolutely. So now it's going to be our art piece that's going to be there. Yeah, this well. Is something to come see. And it's, you know, about the Mar Moran frame, this is what made, like, I, you know, that's where the project really started uh, was with, with the Moran frame and conversations with the city about how we can have this art project here. And there was a lot of discussion about, you know, what the Moran frame means for the community. Right. That's been exactly. a long conversation, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, how do we deal with old industrial buildings? What do we do with brown sites? And how do we clean them up? And how do we make them environmentally friendly? And what can we do to invigorate yeah. those spaces and make them community spaces again? And there's a lot of talk about how the Moran frame and, and the way that space will be used is going to be changing on a yearly basis right. as well. And there's a lot of conversation from the Friends of the Frame, right. uh, a nonprofit that supports the development and, ma and management of the Moran frame. Uh, they, uh, they've, they've talked a lot about how they want to try and have a lot of community input as to how they cultivate that space every year and, and the way that that space gets used within the community. And so it really does solidify this conversation about community wealth right. development and uh, that, that has been brewing around all these projects and I think it will be really great to incorporate those kinds of yeah. things into the dialogue. And so, um, you know, Zach from um, Friends of the Frame is an um, incredible guy. You know, he's, he's got, um, he puts wings down on the Moran frame. He's mm -hmm. he got doing movie nights, which yeah. I'm going to come and enjoy with yeah. him with um, the, everyone and um, so this and they got lights on the Moran frame yeah you know so you can you know cool lights that Bronx and City Arts operates yep um, how wonderful is that and like yeah. our, our piece is gonna be like can you imagine how many people is gonna look at that those pieces? 
that's come from a community um, of yeah. Tidney County. It's really uh, primarily Burlington residents, but definitely Tidney County. Because yeah. last year, was, my, I don't know how many thousands of people showed up to um, um, to Juneteenth event in Roosevelt Park. I was there. Absolutely. Wow, so many people. And so now they're gonna be all down around Church View, all around Burlington, all uh, in City Hall Park. It's gonna be packed. Our area is going to be incredibly um, full because people are going to want to put uh, art on our um, canvas to go on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And so um, mm -hmm. I'm so excited about it and the opportunity to be able to um, put art down there that's really going to be created by our community and, by, um, co and, and definitely, uh, Daniel, that definitely yeah. is what you call community wealth, for real. Yeah. There's no doubt about it because it's all community members, community societies, community just people, yeah. this community. So. And what makes it so rich, I would say, is the diversity mm -hmm. of perspectives right. and cultures mm -hmm. that are present, right? You know, it's, it's really a... Uh, we're trying to bring in as much diversity from different perspectives as we can to shape this space, right? Yeah. Uh, and and that's that's what I call building strength through diversity, right? Uh, that's that's an opportunity for the community as a whole to to really see these varying voices and collective inputs um, that shows just how how uh, rich we are in that diversity here in Burlington, and uh, I really appreciate that. I think that you know when we talk about what wealth is, it is the opportunity to share in many different spaces, in many different experiences, the opportunity to engage with many different kinds of things. And that's, you know, it, 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 it's uh, wonderful to see how much diversity we can pull into this dialogue and into this art project and, and have it involved in so many different community spaces all at the same time. Um, that's community wealth for me. That's, that's the starting ground of, of really creating a, a, a common interest that creates shared value uh, for many different groups in the community. Everyone is benefiting from that kind of space. And Juneteenth, you know, the, the, the freedom of slavery, man, Absolutely. how big is that? You know, it's definitely, um, uh, as um, Kim would say, it's a racial e equity, inclusion, and belonging. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, that's what it is, it's diversity, equity, and inclusion. Absolutely. It's justice, equity, diversity, mm -hmm. and in inclusion. And that's what it's all about. And so it's a happy, incredible moment for people, who, my ancestors, and people who look like me, um, to um, celebrate. And so, as you said, Daniel, about the, uh, diversity and, and equity and inclusion, and people, ethnicities, and cultural, um, diverse cultures, uh, people, it's like that is it's so diverse you know what I mean it's like so yeah. so um very diverse you know and Minuski they're right there neighbors is uh, probably the number number two most diverse culturally diverse um, um with new Americans and yeah. um, and so they'll all be present everybody be present okay where yeah. you're from around the world and they you know, have an all, opportunity to share this they have the opportunity to share and, and it's all about everybody you know because everybody will be out here to celebrate you you know, freedom from slavery, yeah. and, um, and and we're so happy. You know, um, that's on um, June seventeenth, right? Yeah. So Juneteenth is not, you know, June nineteenth is the actual holiday, but I think that the city of Burlington and and uh, the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging uh, committee. Uh, have chosen to actually celebrate Juneteenth on the 17th, which is a Saturday, just making it more inclusive and accessible to folks in the community. And so that's where the art project will be, and that's that's where you know we can really you know see as as many folks within the community as possible. Um, and then the dialogue, like we said, is happening June 25th, and it's going to be at Art So Wonderful at, in the University Mall. Uh, Bruce's new art gallery there, and that's where we'll be holding the dialogue from 10 to 2. 
Um, it'll probably be a little bit shorter than that, but uh, if you're willing to come and would like to come, we are happy to have you in the space. Yeah, plus um, just know that it's right next to targets, 8,000 square feet. This yeah. is enough room for everybody. Yeah. The University Mall have ample parking. Mm -hmm. You can you know, it's easily to, uh, to you know, assess. You can, you know, it's easy if you can walk from right to one straight door to the IHOP doors and come right in our space. Yeah. And um, we're going to have so many freshmen and different things for you mm -hmm. to further enjoy. Now let's talk about, as we see past June 25th, what it seemed, what it was going to look like, because this was called, mm -hmm. I call this Daniel Dialogue. So what, what do you, what does Daniel Dialogue will look like after the 25th? What, what are we, what are we hopeful for? What is our yeah. agenda uh, right now for the 25th? Well, yeah, no, um, so as you and I have talked a lot about, you know, it's really challenging to, to have a short dialogue. You know, if you think about trying to give everyone space to talk, and the, if there's 30 people there, you give everyone a two-minute introduction, that's an hour just for everyone to introduce themselves to each other. And so it takes time and it takes space to really have a rich dialogue, and that means we have to kind of make sure that the numbers are at a level where people can really feel like they're participating and contributing uh, to that space in a meaningful way, right? Yes. Um, so this is to say, you know, with, to go back to this notion of building strength through diversity and having that diversity of thought, diversity of experience, diversity of culture, diversity of identity all coming into that space, there's no way we could do that in just one single dialogue, right? And so the hope is to uh, actually be holding dialogues on community over the next year um, that can really capture the richness of, of all the different perspectives that are present here in Vermont in a variety of different uh, locations, right? You know, maybe we always hold the dialogue at Art So Wonderful, it's a neutral space, and we can always be incorporating, uh, you know, some elements of artistic expression about what, what are the findings that are coming out of those dialogues, and that would be contingent on the folks that participate, but, you know, it's, uh, it's just a, a great opportunity for us as a community to uh, reflect on, on how, how um, challenging COVID was and the pandemic was to our capacity to be in community with yeah. each other. It really, it really challenged a lot of our notions of, of uh, how we can be together in community and it forced us to grow and to change uh, our, our perceptions of community into a lot of digital spaces. I mean, I think Zoomland is here to stay, for better or worse, but it, you know, that's a part of community now too, and how do we reconcile that, you know? And so there's some healing that I think needs to go in there, and there's also some community rebuilding that might need to take place now that we can be in, with each other in person again. And I think these dialogues are a great opportunity to do that to find out you know, what community means to us as a whole and, and reflect on how that has changed through COVID um, and how we're gonna be able to move forward together afterwards. You know, I love being out here in Barry Park. You know, I'm here the yeah. first singing. Hope we keep. Hope they are on our. Um, They're show. singing our tune. Hope yeah. they'll be on our show. Um, also, um, Daniel. So the interactive pieces. It was like, okay, let's come out the classroom. Let's go down to the waterfront and and install this daggone uh, mural over, uh, on the canvas around the incredible location in the waterfront next to the Moran frame. Right. You know. So I'm thinking. Wow, we know we got to continue to do that. Some type of um, yeah, some kind of engagement, engagement in the, yeah. coming out of the classroom. Well, not really the classroom, but what kind yeah. of sort of? Because we all learning. Everybody's learning from everybody. And mm -hmm. um, come out in the beautiful environment mm -hmm. in Vermont here, and, and um, figure out what can, what else can we do? So, what if, if you? And it's just probably gonna be a collective. Um, mm. uh, 
idea or suggestion or what we do. But what do you think could be next time? What next thing we could do when we, it, you know, what could be, what could we do when we come out to class? When we do, but this is what's this going? Is that two yeah. hours? What's the piece? Yeah, it, it, it's about two hours to go and install the piece and, and have some lunch together yeah. and uh, have some more casual conversation yeah. with each other. Yeah. Right, because uh, I would imagine a lot of the folks participating may not know each other, or may sure. may want to just kind of process and reflect we'll on what we talked about, right? And just kind of talk a little yeah. Bit so I, th I think having an art piece or having some kind of community engagement piece, an active element to it, uh, makes a lot of sense. Sure. Uh, sure. And that takes time too yeah. to get everyone sure. there and to participate in that way, but. You know, for this, I think it makes a lot of sense. We're hoping to have some muralists in the in oh, the no, dialogue no, no, no. with us, oh, and definitely. you know, uh, going to be yeah, part of it. You know, because the art piece, this really is like we're trying to create something that reflects as much of the community as possible, and you know, what the uh, street art here in in Burlington really reflects. You know, this this notion of of trying to make this urban space as much. Uh, for everyone as, as we can, uh, I've heard is, is important to a lot of folks and I think that having that kind of art reflected in the community and, and demonstrating how it can be present and, and a part of the community in a meaningful way that others can appreciate uh, makes a lot, of, a lot of sense. And so having those voices as a part of the dialogue as well. In fact, we could we could have dialogue centered on various groups in the future that, that really uh, dig into certain perspectives or certain ideas. Um, but I, I honestly haven't given much thought about what the next dialogue will look like other than trying to make sure that we get the structure right this time and that we can uh, use this framework that we are building uh, to replicate this idea in the future. Right? Um, and the, the hope is that you know each dialogue will be something of an organic process. It will be, you know, I, I honestly believe that a good dialogue is going to be always framed around the participants that are going to be there and, and, the, and the general themes or discussions that we're trying to focus on. And uh, that, that allows us to be a little more intentional about the questions that we're asking uh, participants uh, while they're here with us in dialogue, right? Yeah. And so I know one of the things you, you and I discuss, we discuss a lot, a lot of things about the dialogues, is getting like, um, um, like it, everybody should be a part of the dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, community of dialogues. But, but definitely people who are working with people, like, um, yeah. like banks, like, um, like Chamber of Commerce, the hospitality, like industry, hospitality business suites, industry, business industry, yeah. like um, um, business period, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, social every, services, social you services. Know, folks they from the all Center. should be able to sit in our um, dialogues and talk about what they feel. Like you know, if I was, if I could, or if I would, if I should, what could, what would it be? Yeah. And let's try to make and the people who are into that ideas. Let's make it and let's just do something, right? And let's just, just do something. Absolutely. You well, know? but that's that's a tricky part about dialogues, though, right? You know, because in the dialogue, we're not trying to plan on what to do next. That's that happens outside of dialogues. In the dialogue itself, the whole purpose is to just gain understanding, to seek understanding. And, you know, those groups that you just talked about are a type of diversity as well. You know, a, a banker's perspective versus a social service, you know, uh, perspective versus a, a restaurant perspective versus, you know, the Chamber of Commerce perspective. Each of those folks are from radically different vantage points in our community. And when you bring those vantage points together, when you bring an opportunity for folks like that to speak across boundaries, across sectors, someone from the nonprofit sector, someone from you know, just regular uh, community citizens that are active and that want to be involved in this kind of stuff, artists, poets, writers, uh, you know, there's so many different perspectives that could be had on what community is, and that's that's what we're re reaching for, because you know each of us can carry that perspective, that understanding of what we think community is individually. But when you take that and you put it all into one room together, every time we get to mix up who's in the room, 
a new layer of understanding will be developed. Yes. And so, not just just an example. I mean, I hear you t talking. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I understand banks. It's, yeah. it's just a banks, or it could be any anything. But they have this piece called social responsible banking. Mm -hmm. And so. And when I think about it, a lot of banks use that, we're, not, we're, we're a social responsible bank. We're social, we, we are about social responsible banking. And so, um, I still don't know what that means. Hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, but you know, I think if, um, uh, maybe you do. Yeah. So, well, uh, you, so but I'm trying to say, I'm not I'm picking on the banks or nothing, but I'm thinking that how wonderful since they deal with the community, if they can um, do, go through some, go through our, um, Community Wealth Dialogue, Daniel's Dialogue, and um, and really um, put together um, a social responsible real up to, I don't know, yeah. I don't know. And the same, and one other thing too before you ask, mm -hmm. like um, like the police department, you know, I, I sit on the advisory Absolutely. board for Vermont State Police, fair and partial policing, you know, and they got all this policy. Now really, what is fair and partial policing about? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, and it's got to include the individuals, people, the community. So really, yeah. I think that, um, and I don't think they got that fair and partial policing from like all the officers sitting in the room talking about what they think should be yeah. fair and partial. Absolutely. Fair and partial. No. So, um, but I think they should. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would agree. So, so what, do you, what do you think, what does social responsible banking mean to you? I'm just yeah, curious. no, uh, it's, a, it's a big question. I think that, you know, I've looked a lot at um, corporate social responsibility and, and social responsible banking. I haven't heard that, but corporate social responsibility in general, um, you know, this notion that, um, you know, the private sector uh, has an impact on our community, the private sector, uh, has uh, um, can can affect things directly in our community in very powerful ways, right? Uh, and therefore, uh, I think the the general uh, argument goes that you know if that impact and influence is present, then there's a responsibility involved as well for that impact, for the kind of impact that businesses make. There's a really great gentleman, his name is Michael Porter. He talks a lot about um, shared value and collective impact and how uh, businesses and banks and, and uh, other community sectors, nonprofits, the public sector uh, can participate together in community to build a collective impact that uh, actually drives uh, the purpose of each individual organization forward uh, through shared value, right? Uh, so, and that, that word purpose, that's a really important thing to pay attention to. I think what you're talking about when, when you have a corporate social responsibility plan or an ESG plan, an environment, social, and governance plan, this is new language that's also coming out in this, sub, in this area, what you're really saying is you need to be able to identify the purpose of your business in community. You know, what is your purpose as a business in the community that you're a part of? And, and ha what kind of impact do you want to create with your business? You know, this is, a, this is kind of a new type of thinking for businesses and for nonprofits and for public sector spaces. Usually, nonprofits are very centered on a mission driven type of uh, focus. They have a vision and a mission. There's values present in, in, in nonprofit culture on a regular basis, but not as present in the private sector with businesses. You know, when we look at for profit businesses, the purpose for a long time. Uh, has been limited to just making more money for shareholders. And although making money for shareholders does need to be a part of business, profit does need to be made in order for a business to be sustainable, that I have no arguments with, but I don't think that that needs to be the only purpose for a business. I think that businesses have a huge opportunity to participate in social and environmental spaces to solve some of the biggest problems that we're dealing with as a town, a city, a state, a country, and across the world as a whole, right? And so, you know, that starts with dialogue. 
out. That starts with being able to elevate one's own understanding about how they engage in the space around different subjects um, so that they can develop that purpose outside of dialogue, right? They can take the understanding that they've gained. You know, if we, if we hold a dialogue about community uh, and we have those various diverse perspectives on what community means, on, you know, in different lights, you know, what is community safety for the police, right? You know, right. what is, what is, uh, what is the purpose of the police department, and how does that fold into the way that communities can engage with police in positive, healthy ways, right? And vice versa. You know, uh, I, I think that that's a, that's not. Uh, a process again to to say this is what should be done or this is what ought to be done but just an opportunity to sit down together and seek understanding right? and from that understanding then purpose can be derived in a way that makes sense for the whole community and that's really what dialogue is about no doubt about it appreciate that answer yeah so I just want to thank, I want to say one more time that our Art So Wonderful Gallery mm -hmm. and Performing Center is located at the University of Mall. So the new location is next to the Target across from IHOP. Uh, you, you won't be able to miss it. It used to be the um, South Frontier Library. And uh, so, um, we're very happy that um, it's open now. It's only been open for a couple of days. And we want artists to come in and put their artist art in there. We, I'll go all over the details with you once you decide that you want to do that. You, just, uh, you can email me at artssowonderful at gmail.com. It's A R T S so wonderful at gmail.com. Bruce Wilson. And uh, we're looking for musicians as well. Cause we have a performing stage, a nice performing stage. Yeah. There. And um, that's going to be our big highlight. Open mic, poetry slams, rock shows, hip hop shows. From our youth symphony orchestra is going to perform here. And so um, I'm looking for all type of genres, uh, and media and art. And, um, Everybody's welcome, you know, um, it's not really hard to, um, to get involved with us. You just, you know, we have a, 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 a my, uh, our director, Alondra Dilek Cresta, uh, I think an attorney where we came put together a little artist agreement. They say that your art is in our space. This is many pieces. This is what, you know, what it costs for your art, that we are insured. And um, so it's a basic, just an artist agreement that we have if you will fill out that. That's it. We didn't charge you nothing to hang your art. We choose your art and we charge you nothing to hang your art. And we actually pay you 70, well, you pay us 30% and you make 70%. And so we, we want to be fair to artists and musicians around anywhere, primarily in Vermont, because, you know, we want to give you opportunities to do what you do. We have over 50 awards and we've done over 700 events in the state of Vermont. And so we have been, um, we have over 60% of the murals in Burlington. You know, we have been all of them, we have some in Berlin, we, we create art so work for electric boxes. I know you've seen some of our stuff. And so, and so we, we supply paint, you know, and I mean, we, we do everything we can to get you out on board. Because for me, what I want you to do is continue to work in your craft and music in, in the arts. And, um, and have our spaces have positive, healthy outlets and healthy community dialogues with us. And, um, you know, so, you know, when you think you have nothing to do, just hang out at Arts So Wonderful. It was Arts So Wonderful at gmail.com. So we will thank you again for tuning in. Daniel, close this out, bro. Close this out. This has been a pleasure to, to meet with you, Bruce, and to be on this show and to be involved in such an incredible art project. Uh, just one more time for anyone that's uh, still listening and still with us, thank you, thank you for hearing all we have to say and for being a part of this through your viewership. And uh, we really hope that you get to participate in what we're doing 
on Juneteenth. The celebrations will be on June 17th, downtown Burlington. Look for us, you won't miss it. Big canvas art pieces all throughout the alleyway between BCA and the City Hall. And uh, of course, if, uh, if you have the time and the interest, we would love to have you join us for our dialogue on June 25th at Art So Wonderful at the University Mall from 10 to 2 o'clock. Thank and it's all, free. it's all free. It's all, it's all free. free. We will set some uh, donations, but it's all free. So don't worry about costs. You know, don't worry about costs. We just want your, your, your mind, your body, and your soul. So thank you for tuning in. Art So Wonderful. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.